Chris McPhee, welcome to Business Spotlight Interviews. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. Yeah, really appreciate your, your taking the time and we look forward to hearing uh, more about your business and your journey in, in entrepreneurship and business ownership. Well, I can't wait to share that. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't we just start, Chris, by telling us a little bit about what you actually do and how long you've been doing it. Great. Um, so my lead locker is a company that was formed three years ago. Um, I've absolute necessity um, for um, an affiliate marketing expert to be able to position a, a large volume of work um, within a centralized pool. So we became an aggregation platform um, whereby we aggregate leads from marketing experts and professionals out there that are used to using social media um, to generate a customer inquiry. Um, and that lead is then put onto our exchange for install companies who are interested in purchasing that, so that the target customer, um, to be able to cherry pick that, that customer based on certain criteria. So moreover, it be lead to client and then have to acquire 15 different clients. It was more deliver it to one centralized party and trust that party to onboard all of the buyers. Um, so that's kind of where we're at just now and we're really exciting things coming up in the future. It's, it sounds like a very unique service offering. I guess this is the kind of thing that really only people in your industry. Uh, yeah, I mean, <laughs> that's absolutely right in what you say. I mean, the, the, the digital marketing space um, was really on the back end of the COVID lockdown. Um, so sadly, a lot of the install companies that we work with within the home improvement sector, um, so companies that we, we work with are, are, are typically home improvements companies that specialize in boilers, heating systems, air source heat pumps, solar, um, and various fabric and insulation measures. The problem arose when they could no longer knock on a customer's door within their area that they would service. Um, and we had to, we identified the opportunity probably a little bit earlier than perhaps maybe other people did. Um, and we thought, right, okay, well, before everybody starts targeting the customers um, on social media, let's all get our heads together all around the table and figure out how we can beat the Facebook algorithm. Because all it's going to do is drive everybody else's costs up per acquisition. Um, whereas if you could trust a centralized party to allocate a, re a territory and a campaign and product, then we could all win. So let's just make it happen. Similar to a union. Oh, yeah, it certainly is. Yeah. Uh, one of the things, what I find people really benefit from is hearing uh, just a little bit about your actual journey as a business owner. So you, you've not been doing this a long time, right? Three years. Three years, a relatively short time, yeah. So what what would have been your biggest learning since you became a business owner? Well, it's not the first rodeo in terms of business owner, um, but what I will tell you is in the back end of that, that just because you've got an idea um, and that idea you can get, you, you can come to a point where you want to give up. There came a point in time with this business I wanted to give up um, and that'll happen all the time. You'll all, It's just that having that resilience and that over leveraging yourself really is what, it, what the secret was for us, is making so many promises that if we fail to deliver, then we would have been out of business. Um, and as a consequence of just wanting to make sure that we always kept our promise, um, whenever we were making promises that we just found ourselves in a position whereby um, there was no quit. There was no option to quit. Ah, uh, right. Okay. So you didn't, you didn't regret that path of making so many promises. That's just forced you to do what you needed to do. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So making promises to ensure that the, the work would be, uh, hold myself accountable. Um, part of part of cash flow in the business was taking deposits in advance. So not delivering was a huge, huge risk to the business. It only takes one person to verbally communicate to a marketplace that something wasn't delivered on time when it was meant to be. Um, so part of the cash flow and of how to get to scale things was over promising and we always had to deliver. <laughs> yeah, you're creating pressure to to do what you need to do. But, Absolutely, yes. You need to find a way. Um, so what have been the biggest issues you've had to overcome? Um, really, the biggest issue is scaling too quickly. Uh, if I could go back in time, I would pick less products to service. Uh, we, we would specialize in, um, rather than an entire industry, um, a niche within the industry. Um, 
the biggest fear and the reason why we didn't do that was because once it was proven to work other industries might they've, other people might pick that up and if we weren't already the market leader across all of the products we might have found ourselves with competition that was maybe more competent um so we had to go full steam ahead all guns blazing servicing everybody across the uk for every single product um so so speaking of that then to scaling up and growing too quickly what are your aspirations for growth now for the next five to ten years what we're really excited to be able to do um next month is we're going to be visiting co-living environments throughout europe um with a view to capture video um content um, and to, to live in an environment with other entrepreneurs um, and people who are living uh, in an autonomous fashion. They've just got like maybe an accountancy farm or they perhaps work in social media, video production um, and really get in about what it is that drives and motivates these individuals with a view to create content um, for our YouTube channel. We really want to, to create a YouTube channel, first of all, and then scale it by promoting other people's success and ultimately position ourselves as um, the only sensible option for, for anybody that's doing digital marketing. Um, that's kind of what the five-year goal plan is. So we're going to be spending for the next three three months, we'll be out for 30 days. We're going to Malta, Barcelona, and then we're finishing off in Germany for this year. And then it'll be next year, we do the same thing again around about the same time of year. Yeah, it's a hard life. I, I guess, uh, yeah, I'm going to have to work in a business trip to Barcelona and Malta and Germany as well. <laughs> yes, well, we'll find out how difficult it is when we're out there, but uh, probably the most difficult thing will be the logistics of getting the, the team out there um, and keeping them there for the entire 30 days without arguing and fighting amongst each other for for, for video time, right? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, just speaking of team, uh what what are your thoughts? I mean, you've got a team of folk there. I mean, what what are your thoughts on the current employment situation in Scotland? How how do you feel it's changed since COVID or since other, you know, recent world events? One of the things that I've noticed is is that there used to be a lot more grants available for um, bringing business to a town that was maybe a little bit run down. That seems to have evaporated. Um, we were in the we were in the mindset of look after COVID had kind of say, oh, let's go and find out what funding there is to help us um, onboard the next generation, because quite typically there would be a little bit to help rejuvenate a territory, an area. Um, and if we moved to that area, we would get help and assistance with revitalising that, that that particular location. It was gone. Um, I think that, that what happened in actual fact was that there was just a little bit of a concern with regards to rental rates as well. As well. Mm. Um, the, the, the high street is completely ruined in, in Glasgow. Um, and surrounding areas. There doesn't seem to be much footfall for um, retail business as much as there was. And as a consequence, we are finding a lot more applicants um, that are being displaced and they don't have any experience in the social media sector, but they're just looking for something, right? And that demonstrates that there's a lot of unemployment. So um, when you recruit, what qualities do you look for in employees and how do you uh, how do you foster that in a productive work environment? So we 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 typically look for people that are just wanting to make a change in their life. Um, that's all I'm really looking for is for when somebody comes to us, what's their driving motivator? Have they recently had a kid? Did they now see, suddenly need to get their life together and start making some serious money um, and provide for the family? Um, the second thing that we look for is critical thinking. So we ask them a series of questions, for example, that will allow for us to be able to build an idea of how do they think as an individual. Um, we try to steer clear of any kind of political things that might sway me um, to make a decision. Obviously, that, that's something we've all got to be conscious of, right? Um, and keep it as open an environment as possible with regards to like if they've got any concerns or anything. I want them to be real. I don't want a robot, <laughs> um, a professional interviewer. This is one thing that I've learned, having done my series of job hopping prior to building my own businesses and never feeling as if um, I could, I'm a master of interviews. Anybody who's really fantastic at interviews has done a lot of interviews, <laughs> um, regardless of what their CV says. So I'm looking for people that aren't necessarily refined at the interview process, but are genuine, honest, um, and one of the questions we recently started implementing was 
Um, how much money do you have in your bank account right now? And if they give you an answer and they're not prepared to show it, they're off the they're off the list. <laughs> um, it's, it's a really strict uh, a strict process. And that's one of the only ones that we've only started using recently, and it was in the back end of Elon Musk, um, who had who had started to implement this himself as well within his recruitment process. So it's just about that honesty. If you're not honest at that point, then how can we help you build your future moving forward? Well, I, I look forward to hearing how that goes. I'm going to <laughs> yeah, might be a check in with you. <laughs> we, need to, we need to ensure that HR is happy. <laughs> yes, we're going fine. This is, we're not finished yet, but I have to say, this is definitely one of the most unique companies <laughs> I've ever had with a business owner and one of the most unique and exciting strategies. Yeah, it's been an incredible, but we're trying to, t one of the, the next things, I mean, after the five-year plan, just to kind of, We've got big sites on bigger things, but after five years, once we've produced a business in a box for every day, individuals to be able to to drive traffic to us, and that could be social media people on TikTok, people who have blogs, people who have call centers. We've already got that in operation now in two countries, um, South Africa and the Philippines, where we've got outbound call centers who typically used to serve our clients that now serve us to make it means of serving the clients. Um, we're looking to to kind of get on board with TikTok um, in quite a big way. Um, and th th there'll just be an unlimited uh, method of driving traffic, which is ultimately the customer to us for call qualification, measure identification, listing of the product and sale. We make payments daily um, to our affiliates as well, which is really cool. Um, so providing a business in a box for an everyday person is really where it's at. Fantastic. There's been a lot of displaced, displaced workers out there that are unskilled. We can do something to help those people then then we're on to a good thing so you've got a lot on the go at the moment chris um how yes. how do you bounce so people often you know listen in on this next question right or listen into the answer to this next question how do you balance your personal life with the demands of running a business well the great thing is i'm still within that five year time frame that I've given myself of absolute self-sacrifice. Um, I've, 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 I've tried to not give myself any time. In actual fact, recently I posted on LinkedIn showing a little bit of vulnerability, um, highlighting that um, I had taken a, a weekend off. It was a long weekend just passed. I had, a, I, had a, I went out for a social, a social occasion and I felt bad every single moment of it. And I know I shouldn't. It's something I want to get better at. Um, but I felt terrible for having that day, not just because it was one day, it was the day after. My hangover is, is, is pretty serious. <laughs> and so I'm out of commission for the full entire next day. Um, so it's about taking into consideration that I've, I've, I've blocked off five the next five years to just 100%, 120 hours, 80 hours to 120 hours per week, every single week, Monday to Monday. Um, and it's a price that I'm prepared to pay because the upside I feel is going to be absolutely huge. Um, it's not that we don't have a great team around about us, but when they see the leader doing as much as I do, then they are more inclined to want to keep up. Um, so for, for me, that's that's the key. Look, there's no shortcut. In the early days, we've got to work. We have to put it back. Put it work. Yeah, 100%. Um, so I'll ask you again in five years how you balance your personal life and your business life. <laughs> I hope that there's a slightly different answer. But for right now, 100%. Even next month, there'll be a slightly different answer. I mean, next month, I'm going to be spending quite a lot of time out, out with the country. Um, and my day will look very different. Um, so right now, it's it's just it, it comes and goes in phases, really, with regards to the work workload and the commitment and the allocation of work to, to other members of the team. I'm very, very... Uh, you know, when it comes to making sure that things are done in a specific way. Um, and yeah, I'm now I've suddenly become conscious of the fact that I'm waffling <laughs> because I came on with a plan. Keep it short and simple. <laughs> You'll hear from me if you're waffling. We, we actually only have one final question then, which, which I like to finish on, which is um, what would you say to anyone or what advice would you give to anyone who's thinking of going into business for themselves? Don't worry about a business plan because that business plan is not going to make you, um, the business plan's never going to, the business plan we started with um, actually stopped me from leaving an employer for about 46 months and I nearly lost an opportunity um, within the market that I wanted to get involved in. 
Um, so don't let the business plan slow you down, even if it's just written on the back of a handkerchief with a framework of what you want to achieve, achieve that's fine. You don't need to seek investors straight away. You need to get a proof of concept that your business works. So jump head first, acquire a couple of clients, get the commitment from the clients to help cash flow you. Um, you don't need money. This was all started without any investment, no capital. Um, it was started solely from uh, an understanding of the market, uh, a problem that needed to be solved, and uh, a, a, an understanding that, look, you can't ask for more than you can deliver. So, so understand what you're able to do, price it accordingly. In fact, price it just a little bit less than it's fair, mm. that you feel it's fair to build up your industry expert, uh, to, to be recognized as an industry expert, and then the world's your oyster. So no business plan, don't let that stop you from getting to that next level or taking the, taking the jump. I'm laughing because I, when I started my business uh, 15 years ago, I uh, attended some training courses with a well-known government funded business startup support yeah. company uh, or organization, government. and. Um, that was the first thing they told you to do was write a business plan. <laughs> they all do it. Um, and I think that's so that they can help you to attain funding because they learn a commission from it, right? A, a large portion of it comes down to that. It's an understanding that, um, that if there's a market and you provide a solution, then the client doesn't need to see your business plan. So who are you showing it to if you're not going to be going to the bank to ask for money? Cracking. Love it. <laughs> of the answers I got were what I expected, and that's what makes for good interview. So, um, right. Chris, we're coming up to the end of our time, but thank you so much. I mean, this has been an absolute delight. We loved hearing about you and about your business and about what's in store for you for the next few years. Well, it's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you so much for having me again. Thanks, Chris. Take care.